Howard Miller across the street came in. Howard probably came in because he could get a free ride on my travel expenses to Zealand, you know. Howard was always that way. And we were all involved in cooking up these clocks, and Irving in the end was the one who made them complicated and beautiful and so on. And there was one night when the ball clock got developed, which was one of the really funny evenings. So Noguchi came by and Bucky Fuller came by. I'd been seeing Buck, a lot of Bucky those days. And uh, Noguchi, who can't keep his hands off anything, you know, this marvelous itchy thing he's got. He, he saw that we were working on clocks and he started making doodles. And then Bucky, you know, sort of brushed his sabo aside. He said, I, he said this, is a, this is a good way to do a clock. And he made some utterly absurd. <clears throat> the next morning, and we were, we were imbibing something, you know, not very furiously because we were having a wonderful time, but everybody was taking a crack at this, you know, pushing each other aside, you know, and making scribbles. Too bad we didn't save that roll of paper. <laughs> And the next morning, then we, at some point we left. We were suddenly all tired and we'd had a little bit too much to drink. And the next morning I came back and here was this roll and Irving and I looked at it. And somewhere in this roll there was the ball clock. Well, I don't know to this day who cooked it up. I, I know it wasn't me. It might have been Irving, but he didn't think so. <clears throat> And we both guessed that, that Isamo had probably done it, because Isamo has a genius for doing two stupid things and making something extraordinary out of, <laughs> you know, out of the combination.